breaking news tonight in the mysterious disappearance of a stay-at-home mother of two young boys. We are just moments away from a live police news conference in the desperate search for Jennifer Houston. Her devastated family is begging for answers. It's completely out of character for her. Uh, maybe to go have a coffee with a, a girlfriend for an hour, but to be gone like this is just nothing she's ever done. And I've, we're about to celebrate our 10-year wedding anniversary and we've been together together uh, we've been together for 17 years so this is like nothing she's ever done before it's plausible that maybe she's in a ditch somewhere but i i don't know if you all saw this but in the press conference he answered a lot of questions he spoke very calmly but the minute the rep the minute he was asked well where were you and when how long was it until you called and it wasn't until 9:30 after um, bath time i thought it was odd that she wasn't home till 9:30 and i thought it was very odd that he didn't want to answer any more questions. He said, that's all I have to say today after they were asking him when he noticed she was gone. Kellen and Jennifer, they're just a classic American family like so many we all know and love. And, uh, you know, I personally know the loving relationship that they have. And, um, and I don't think, uh, you know, I, Jennifer is a very strong woman, very intelligent, very strong, very classy. And to be honest with you, I think she's the kind of uh, person that would uh, fight uh, her way uh, out of a situation if, if it were some such thing as an abduction. I, she's just a, a, a strong person. 14-year-old girl, I mean, she's just starting life. Our hearts are broken. A shocking murder rocks a sleepy Michigan town. Now cops are scrambling to solve the mystery of who murdered beautiful 14-year-old April Millsap. April took her precious dog Penny for a walk last Thursday evening on a popular trail in her hometown in Michigan when she didn't come home. After about an hour, her frantic mother called cops. April's faithful dog Penny alerted two joggers on the trail and led them to the girl's body. This wasn't some type of robbery. She was only 14 years old. So you really do have to question, was this someone that knew her that was specifically targeting her? Maybe some type of revenge killing because as it stands now, the police don't even know what the cause of death was other than it was a homicide. So well, it's just uh, tragic Dr. and Jeff, I hope they get to the bottom of it. I do too. Straight out to TMZ news manager, Mike Walters. Mike, so great to see you. You are all over the story. If anybody really knows what happened between Orlando and Justin and the women behind it, it's you. Tell us. <laughs> Absolutely, Jane. Good to see you, too. So one name, Miranda Kerr. That is the mother of Orlando Bloom's child, his ex-wife. And I can tell you, here's what went down. When this punch was thrown, her name was thrown around by both guys several times. And the background story here, Jane, is that when about two years ago, there was a, uh, a thing happening in New York with Victoria's Secret, a show that Justin Bieber uh, performed at. And Miranda Kerr, still married to Orlando Bloom, allegedly had some kind of interaction with Justin after the show. Now, that is the allegation. I can tell you fact that these two just brawled. Orlando threw a punch. I've seen the video. We had it on TMZ.com where he throws a punch and misses. And Justin immediately put up a photograph of Miranda Kerr on his Instagram, then deleted it. And just a few minutes ago, he also put up a photo of, of Orlando Broom, Bloom crying like this on his Instagram. Justin is being very clear that it's over Miranda Kerr and the allegation that he might have done something sexually or something, uh, an affair type thing with, uh, uh, you know, with a Miranda. Tonight, outrage and disgust as police say a 911 call about a child uh, stuck in a hot car goes from bad to much worse, much worse. Cops say a couple who tried to save the boy ended up being run over by the child's enraged mother, leaving the Good Samaritan in a wheelchair. Straight out to my exclusive guest, Shannon Dominguez and Alan Mason. Thank you so much for joining us to share your story. I'm going to start with you, Shannon. Uh, the police report says this mother in her car drove over your leg. Tell us about yes. how badly injured you are now and how it's changed your life. Um, I still can't put any weight on my left leg. Um, there's a rod in my leg on my tibia, but not on my tibia. So there's no support on my tibia. So I can't walk or use a walker. I have to a wheelchair bound. What happened? I realized that her son was in the car by himself in the front seat. 
um, had no seatbelt or anything on. And like so, I immediately called 911 um, and gave her their, her make and model of car, the color of her car, and her driver, her license plate number. Um, and as I was talking to them, she came out and she heard me talking to the police on the phone and she knew exactly what was happening. And that's the point where she had said she was going to um, kick my butt in a nice way, so sing it. Um, and my boyfriend, Alan, got out of the car. He had already come back out. So he got out of the car and stood in between us and said, nobody's going to touch anybody. There's gonna, not going to be any violence. And then she hauled off and hit him hard in the face and left him well. Jumped in her car, threw it in reverse, and the burning tires threw it in drive and came straight. She came into, we were in, still standing in parking spaces. And she came through those parking spaces and hit me, and I went under her car. And then she hit Alan, and he went up over the car. 